Well, it's home to the landmark South San Francisco sign. You know it well if you drive on 101, of course. But you may not know, it's also home to a species of plants that don't grow anywhere else in the world. Our Brian Hackney introduces us to a doctor who's made it his mission to document the secrets of San Bruno Mountain. Come on over here, I want to show you the fracture. Hand surgeon during the week. I think this will be fixed in about 30 minutes. All right, let's go. Botanist on the weekend? Parsnip. Cow parsnip. Yeah. Not surprising. A lot of the explorers in botany were doctors. You did not get your medicine from a drugstore. You collected it in the woods. You had to know your plants because all your medicines came from plants. Is this the path? Wow, it's growing up. That's Dr. David Nelson. Yeah, it's over here. And his writing partner, Doug Allshaus. Some plants seem to kind of like the worse the weather is, the better they like it. The plants up here don't know what uh, time of the year it is because they think it's winter right now when you and I think it's summer. Oh, there's some seaside daisy over there. Oh, yeah, 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 beautiful. And what's important is there's five plants here that don't exist anywhere else in the world. Our four rare plants are all manzanitas. This is San Bruno Mountain manzanita. It only grows here and nowhere else in the world, and it's named for San Bruno Mountain. Why do rare plants grow in San Bruno Mountain? There's a couple of answers. Partly it's unique soil, and the soil comes from the geology, and this is unique geology. And this guy's been knocking around San Bruno geology for decades. You see this? This is a flock. Ed Medley loves the rocks. Aesthetically, they look lovely. And you know what? They have character. He's a geotechnical engineer, tracing their origin to the distant past. All this lot was underwater, under a, a big, deep marine basin, and there were volcanoes going off, and there were dinosaurs that were running around, and there was lots of earthquakes and lots of submarine landslides. It's all underwater. This is where it came from. What's fun is, look at this. It's growing on virtually solid rock. These guys know so much about, yes, San Bruno Mountain. Rule number one is hang around people who know way more than you do. You'd think they'd written a book on the subject. You take this trail here. In fact, they have. I like to tell people that the reason the book got written was because everything I hated to do, he loved to do, and everything he hated to do, I loved to do, so that's how we got it going. It's easy to get lost. On a clear day, could we see forever? We could see Marin, we could see Montana, we could see the East Bay over here. The other thing about it is that we're right close to San Francisco. There's a huge amount of civilization. Uh, you can't see it now, but we're totally surrounded by cities. And yet this is the largest wild area. People know about San Bruno Mountain because they drive right by it on 101. But no, I think most people don't have a clue about what a treasure this San Bruno Mountain is. And that there are plants here that don't exist anywhere else in the world is amazing. What you have to do is come up and smell it. And yet they don't even know about it. And it's here. And they need to come up and see it. I hope the mountain bites you because once it bites you, you stay bitten. Rather beautiful. 